This is the Bio 11 lecture on nucleotides and phosphodiester linkages. Nucleotides make up nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are either DNA, there's just one kind of DNA and it has one job, that's to encode information in the cell, or RNA. Now RNA, while it's one kind of molecule, it, depending on the length of the RNA and how it folds, there are many really different kinds of RNA, that is there are many jobs of RNA. The monomer of nucleic acids are nucleotides and Nucleotides are more complicated than the monomers we've covered up till now. A nucleotide is a base, a sugar, and a phosphate. So let's start by looking at bases. Bases, and don't confuse this term base with acid and base. This, this is, uh, base is short for nitrogenous base, uh, so it's not just is an unfortunate similarity, but it's not acid and base. So bases are either one ring or two ring structures that contain some nitrogen. So in each ring, so the one ring structure, or the general name for a one ring nitrogenous base, is a pyrimidine. So you can see there's a nitrogen in this position here and this position here in all of the pyrimidines. What makes pyrimidines different from each other are other functional groups. So you can see there's um, an amino group up here in this attached to this carbon, in cytosine and thymine there's a carbonyl, in uracil there's also a carbonyl. But what makes uracil different from thymine is that there's a methyl group attached to the thymine on this carbon where there's no methyl group at all over here. The two ring bases are purines uh, and they're similar as well. I've cut off the bottom here. I can make that better. Uh, and again, they're two ring structures. They contain some nitrogen. It's a bigger structure, so there's four nitrogens here instead of just two, and they have different side groups, as you see. The point is not to memorize them, but when you see a ring structure that has some nitrogen in it, it's going to be a base. A base with a five carbon sugar, either ribose or deoxyribose, and we'll have a closer look at that in a minute, is a nucleoside. A base with a sugar and a phosphate is a nucleotide, that is maybe not just one phosphate, one, two, or three phosphates. So a nucleoside is a base and a sugar. A nucleotide is a base, a sugar, and one or more phosphates. Let's take a closer look at the sugars. The sugars are either ribose or deoxyribose. And we had a look at ribose earlier in the sugar, in the monosaccharides talk. And so the only difference between ribose and deoxyribose is the absence, the deoxy, so the absence of an oxygen here on the second carbon. Now, the carbon numbering we want to distinguish the carbons in the sugar from the carbons that were in the base. And so for that reason, the marker prime, and that's what this little apostrophe is, prime is used to, when we're talking about the sugars in, I'm sorry, talking about the carbons in the sugars. So we say that deoxyribose is missing an oxygen on the two prime carbon. This is the five prime carbon on deoxyribose and the five prime carbon on ribose. Nucleotides, when they're single nucleotides, not part of nucleic acid, but when they're just individual nucleotides, there can be either one, two, or three sugars. And here you see an example of adenosine monophosphate, adenosine diphosphate, and adenosine triphosphate. So here's the adenine, right, that's the, the base part in each one, adenine, adenine, adenine. Here's the sugar, right, and this is the ribosugar, 
right? So, uh, so you know it's a ribose sugar because there's oxygens in both places, in both the two and three prime positions. Here's the sugar in each one, and adenosine monophosphate, one phosphate here, adenosine diphosphate, we have the phosphorus here, phosphorus here, and adenosine triphosphate has the three phosphoruses, three phosphate groups. There are a lot of different kinds of nucleotides depending on whether there's either a, the ribose sugar or the deoxyribose sugar, and then the number of phosphates you have. Uh, nucleotides, if you see a small d in front of the nucleotide initials, it means it's the deoxy sugar. We don't write an R for ribo, so if there's no lowercase d in front of the nucleotide name, then you know it's the ribo sugar. So this nucleotide is deoxycytosine monophosphate. This one is guanine diphosphate thymidine triphosphate, deoxyguanine triphosphate, uridine monophosphate, deoxyadenosine triphosphate, and so on. So, I'm, you know, if we can go on for a long time listing possible combinations. And so there are many different nucleotides circulating in the cell. In this slide, you can just see all of almost all of the atoms drawn out in the base and the sugar and the phosphate. Uh, for some reason in this particular drawing the artist left out the carbons here on the sugar so we just see the shape of the sugar without drawing in uh, the carbons except for the num number five carbon of course. And while this carbon isn't labeled, this is the number five carbon, so it's the five prime carbon, and the phosphate is always attached to the five prime carbon of the sugar. So in each one of these, the phosphate's attached to the five prime carbon. And these are all, of course, the deoxy, as you see, they're all the deoxy nucleotide monophosphates. There are other important roles for nucleotides. ATP and GTP are short-term energy sources for cellular work. You're probably familiar, familiar with ATP as an energy source. GTP also is an energy source. They're not interchangeable. It's that certain cellular reactions require GTP as an energy source, most require ATP, but for the ones that require GTP, there has to be GTP. And then the other important molecule is cyclic AMP and again cyclic GMP. Both of them are used. Now you'll remember both adenine and guanine are the pyrimidine. So these are both pyrimidine nucleotides and they're both the riboforms in, this uh, in each case. And adenosine, I'm sorry, and cyclic AMP is made from adenosine triphosphate and cyclic GMP is going to be made from guanosine triphosphate. And when it's made by this enzyme, adenylate cyclase, two of the phosphates will be cleaved off. So the two terminal phosphates will be cleaved off. And this primary phosphate, the alpha phosphate, is gets linked simultaneously not just to the five prime carbon, you'll see over here to the five prime carbon, but also to the three prime carbon. And this is what makes it makes it cyclic AMP because this the two point attachment of the phosphate group to two different points on the sugar adds another ring. And cyclic AMP signals within cells. So when something's going on outside of the cell that the cell needs to respond to, often the messenger within the cell sort of carrying the message from one part of the cell to the other saying, you know, alert, do something, is cyclic AMP or cyclic GMP. Nucleotides are put together with phosphodiester linkages. The phosphodiester linkage links the three prime carbon of one sugar and a phosphate group that was already attached to the five prime carbon of another sugar. 
So let's see that here. Uh, here you see the phosphate group. Now the phosphate group, of course, was already attached to the 5' prime carbon. Here's the label on this particular sugar. But let's have a look down here. This is, still, this is the 5' prime carbon of this nucleotide. So this would be, this is a cytosine monophosphate. Here is part of the uh, of DNA. Okay. So this linkage between the phosphate group and the 3' prime carbon is a phosphoester linkage. And of course, this was a phosphoester linkage. This was made when the nucleotide was made originally. So together, two phosphoester linkage, linkages make a phosphodiester linkage. And we'll see in a subsequent lecture how these when you make a chain of nucleotides, make nucleic acid, how they function in DNA and RNA.